to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another movie review recommendation. What am I doing today on this fine, lovely day? Well, the King is going to be doing a movie. I'm making an exception. I know you guys are going to probably be yelling on the screen because I said I'm going to be covering movies from the 2000s. Well, I'm going to make a few recommendation uh, no nos or breaking the, my own rules in a sense just so I can put this movie here and recommend it to all you guys. What movie am I referring me breaking the rule for? Twister. Yes, it came out in May of 1996. This movie, guys, is probably one of my top 10 movies or was on my top 10 movies of all time. One of my favorites, I think. I'm not going to lie to you. I must have seen this movie over 30 times since it came out in 96 till now. Watch it again today because it's been a good, I would say, eight years since I last seen this movie. Every year I would watch this movie. That's how good or how much I love this movie. Let me give you some details. It's directed by Jen DeBonte, written by Michael Crichton. If you know who the hell Michael Crichton is, a uh, little movie, Jurassic Park, little books here and there. It's about an hour and 45 minutes long. came out on May 10th of 1996. It stars the late, great Bill Paxton. He plays Bill. Helen Hunt, who plays Joe. Carl Eloise, I can never pronounce his name. He was in The Princess Bride. He's the main actor for that. Jamie Gertz, uh, she plays Melissa. It's his fiance in the film until things go apeshit, as they say. Uh, another late, great actor, Philip Seymour Hoffman. He plays Dustin. He's kind of like uh, one of their tech guys on their crew that, you know, storm chases. It's kind of like a, a goofball, but he's damn cool. Everybody loves him. Lois Smith, Aunt Meg, plays uh, Helen Hunt's me uh, aunt that they go and eat there later in the film. There's Alan Ruck. He plays Rabbit. Sean Whalen, Alan. Scott Thompson. Uh, he plays Preacher. His, I think it's Jason his name is in there. Uh, Joey Slotnick plays Joey. How convenient, eh? W Wendell... Josepher Payne, she's the tomboy. She's the only other female crew member of their own. That's pretty much the crew. Then you got Jeremy Davis, who plays Lawrence. He's also there. Zach Grenner, he plays Eddie. He's the douchebags. Carl Lewis character, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jonas, his uh, kind of like right-hand man. Then you got Gregory Sporletter. He plays Willie, also part of his crew. Abraham Ben Ruby, he plays Bubba. He's part of the douchebags uh, crew. He also played in ER. If you watch ER, he was that big guy there, the lovable big guy in ER. You'll know exactly what I mean. And well, this is a surprise. Jake Busey, he plays the lab assistant for the douchebag. So like I was saying, phenomenal movie. One of the better ones. Uh, I'll do a spoiler, non-spoiler, then a spoiler. More non, Less non-spoiler, more spoiler. It's not going to be a long video, guys. Uh, pretty much amazing film. Pretty big for the day. It was one of those big blockbusters that everybody was waiting for. Is it going to deliver? It deals with tornadoes, so just by the title. So if you guys don't know what the hell I'm talking about, it's cool. I love the fact how they were kind of showing the technology, how far behind we are about uh, detecting uh, tornadoes. So that was Helen Hunt's character's uh, main goal was to find a system, improve it, study tornadoes so they can give people longer than three minutes to kind of, you know, when the alarm goes off and then they have to go run and hide. She wanted to give them more time so there'll be a higher uh, success rate of survival amongst the devastation. Uh, something happens to her character at the beginning of the film and that kind of sets her in a way. Uh, she, I guess, meets Bill Paxton's character. They fall in love. They get married and then they kind of go their own separate ways and then fate has brought them back for a reason. And uh, there's this new fiance that's in the picture, which is pretty cool how she gets involved. Uh, and then slowly through time, you can see what was holding them apart kind of thing. The flow of the movie was great. Uh, for the most part, the visuals held up, but some of the special effects, yeah, they kind of fell flat on its face. Don't forget, 1996 technology for special effects and shit compared to now, big difference. You can really see it kind of affected it a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit of fuzziness, not too much clarity that you would get with the movies now if they were to did a Twister movie or even that stupid movie Sharknado. You could see it kind of suffers a little bit like that, but everything else, visually, it still looks good. It looks like a movie that's been made about 10 years ago. I'm not going to say that it aged perfectly, but amazing actors, great flow, keeps you on the edge of your seat. I had my little nephew actually sit down and watch. He was bugging me to watch it, so I go, you know what? 
let's check it out. And he said he loved it. So, I don't know. He loved it more than Titanic, which that's another movie there in itself, which is great. But I'm glad he enjoyed it. He got some kick out of it. He hadn't seen a tornado ever, and he kind of got full. Gives you an idea of more of the idea of what Twisters and the Devastation. Because a lot of people, unless you go through it or you live in Tornado Alley in the States or places that do have tornadoes frequently you don't know the devastation that it causes and how important it is and the characters portray that very well it was a race and the douchebag was there you kind of separated Carl Yu's character a Jonas started his own crew you got funding and shit so it was kind of like a battle of the guys who didn't have money who meant well and then the guys who just wanted to get rich and famous but everybody gets their own due let's just say that but overall I liked it I think you guys will like it too if you like that you like Helen Hunt you like disaster kind of slash twister films like this. It is what it was for the time, and I think it did it pretty damn good. It was one of those big blockbusters that set everything off, and that special effects got more involved as we went along, and it was good. I think it was good for the time. It's not a perfect film right now, as I notice 20 years or so, 24 years later, I think. And you see how it aged. It didn't age too well, but it's still seeable. You can actually sit down and watch it. You're not going to be taking away from the visual effects or anything. The storyline still there to grab your attention. So there you go. That is my non-spoiler uh, review on that. You guys let me know in the comment section below. Did you guys see it? Is it one of your favorites? Did you like it as much as I did? You know, let me know in the comment section. Okay, spoilers. So spoilers to make it certain and simple. Something devastating happens to Helen Hunt's character. She's young as a kid. She loses her father to an F5 tornado that kind of literally, as they were fleeing for the tornado with hardly any freaking uh, warning, gets pulled out right with the tornado holding onto the door and dies. And that kind of sets her off in her way. And she's kind of guarded about things. And she's obsessed with trying to kind of like figure out tornadoes and to give a better warrant. She, you know, she's trying to find meaning to her life to kind of like help prevent this from happening to other people and at the same time isolating the people around her, especially Bill Paxton's character, which we find out that he kind of wants a divorce. He kind of couldn't handle it anymore, left his own separate way, dealt with doing the storms and shit. He meets this fiance who's Melissa. I think she's a, a reproductive uh, shrink or I don't know what the hell she is that kind of helps people. It's kind of funny. And things slowly unravel between there, and she realizes that he still loves Helen Hunt's character, and this is the reason why, and Helen Hunt's uh, reasoning for doing what she does, it doesn't make sense, but he kind of, like, gets through her eventually. But, yeah, they, they're trying to create a warning system. They have these machines called Dorothy, which is <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Yes, that's what it is, Twisters, you know. That's what this whole movie is. All about creating little devices that can get sucked up by the tornado and they can get readings and kind of, you know, give them more of the ability to predict tornadoes from happening. Instead of getting three minutes, they get longer. Uh, they meet up, you know, they go to the aunt's house at one point there that basically eat there and then shit goes down. The house gets torn up and you can totally see the devastation or what Helen Hunt's character was trying to prevent or to let people, more people survive. She almost lost her aunt, which kind of like set her back. The movie, there's a movie theater scene which is pretty freaking cool because back in the day, just that sound that they kept on playing, that do -do 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 noise like that, and then the winds kick in and the way the drive through movie screen gets tossed up and cars get flying and shit, you could tell it's kind of cheesy for, the, for right now, but back in the day that was like, holy shit, look at that, right? Special effects do not hold up as much as I thought they would. You can really see that, you know, that looks kind of cheesy and... From what we're used to now till back then, night and day. 1996 till now, guys, hell of a difference. If they would have used modern day special effects for this kind of movie, they remade this movie, it'll be amazing. Let's just say that. But I don't think they can because they already have the technology, right? Because that was the whole plot of the story. Like, you know, not only a personal relationship between Helen Hunt's character and Bill Paxson, but their way of figuring out system, trying to get, uh, you know, get to the tornado learn what the hell so they can study the damn thing and prevent many deaths and tragedies down the road in uh, Tornado Alley, right? But the devastation that you've seen, the houses getting ripped up and cows floating around. Yes, if you guys don't know, this is the movie that you could see a, a cow floating or, or twisting right around them in the air. That was unbelievable back in the day. I'll tell you, we shit our pants when we see it. We were laughing more than anything. But jokes, the actors were amazing in it. Bill Paxton was great. Uh, Phyllis... Philip Seymour Hoffman was the kind of like the Joker of it in there. He's also in it, passed away, unfortunately. So we've got two good actors that kind of passed away. But everybody played their part. Uh, Carl Ewes, uh, the guy from The Princess Bride, 
Holy shit, he was a douchebag. He played Jonas, and the guys, oh my god, he was basically in it for, he wanted to get famous and get, you know, that was his thing. Get famous, get sponsorship rather than do the right thing and shit. So there was kind of like butting of heads uh, between the two crews there. Uh, Storyline flowed pretty good for the most part. Uh, it was only like an hour and 45 minutes. It didn't feel that long. The uh, tornadoes hitting, I think there was like three or four major tornadoes in the whole film. And of course, they leave the big one for the end. Then it was pretty cool when you seen them like kind of like figuring out that the thing's too light and to see the truck get launched and you got uh, 18 wheelers coming their way and they're trying to avoid tractors from dropping from the sky. Trust me, they threw everything but the kitchen sink, let's just say at the end. And then uh, them holding on with the strap at the end so they don't get blown in and they kind of witness firsthand the inside or the eye of the storm itself to see what goes on and how peaceful it is even though you see the green skies and the devastations and all that shit all the way around debris and all that it was crazy but i loved it i loved the way it was back then the special effects were top notch back then now mm -mm. like i was saying earlier this was my top 10 movies or one of my top 10 movies until a good three or four years ago you know it was right there i must have seen the movie at least 20 30 times since it came out twice in the theater and then a whole shitload on dvd Blu-ray, I think this is my first time watching it on Blu-ray, to tell you the truth. But I, that's why I highly recommend you guys check this out. If you guys like these kind of films, that you can get some sort of idea of Twisters. If you haven't experienced it, this is a good way to kind of understand and appreciate what these storm chasers actually do in real life. But the actors did a good job. The whole movie's good. The plot's decent, solid. You know, special effects, kind of not there anymore like they used to be. But it won't keep you back from enjoying this movie or kind of like keeping you from... Like, you know, even looking this way, you will watch it. It's only an hour and 45 minutes. I highly recommend it. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section below. What do you guys think of uh, Twister? Do you think it's uh, kind of lacks that kind of like one-two punch like it did back in the day? Is it one of your favorites like mine? Or is it, you know, does it even crack the top 25 is yours? Just let me know in the comment section below. So there you go, guys. That's my Twister movie review. I know I bent the rules a little bit and went into the 90s. Shoot me right now. There's going to be a couple other movies that I'll recommend down the road. I'm pretty sure that I'll bend my 2000s uh, rule, movie review recommendation list. But movies like this, I think you guys will allow me to do so. So anyways, like I always say, like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other movie review recommendations. Check out my podcast videos. New videos dropped up. The new one this week, every week, every Wednesday. You'll love it. Special guests. We talk about everything. I think you guys are going to get a kick out of it. And most importantly... Stay off my throne, and I will see you very soon right here on YouTube. Take it easy.